So today we're going to do a, a quick video on, on six different uh, wild foods that glow, grow in Waterloo Region um, that are fairly common in your backyard or along trails. The first one is um, wood sorrel, the second one is wild lettuce, and then we'll go into dandelion, and we'll head into wild violet, and then we'll do wild carrot, and then we'll have a look at mallow. These are invasives from Europe and from Asia that are really good at reseeding themselves and they're, um, they're really hard to locally extri extirpate, which basically means uh, uh, using so many of them that there are none left in a particular area. Uh, it's when we get into uh, edible plants that are native, a lot of them have very, very specific ecosystem requirements. So you have to be a, more, a lot more cautious with them. So the, the invasive plants that love disturbed land, which we have lots of in cities, are a great place to start when you're learning about uh, wild plants. Um, as far as my background, uh, I, I grew up with a mom who was really into outdoor activities, hiking, bicycling, cross-country skiing, canoeing, and um, I have uh, two years of pre-meds and a degree in environmental studies and uh, pretty well a lifetime's accumulation of learning about uh, edible plants and medicinal plants. Um, it's always more to learn, but it's, it's fun to engage on it. So the first one that I'd like to show you is called wood sorrel. And wood sorrel is a very common weed in gardens and in, um, let's put it against the little cabin here so you can have a good look at it and get some contrast. Um, it's a very common weed in gardens and along trails and, and in edges, edges of woods, edges of fields. And you'll notice that there are three leaves together and they're all very heart-shaped leaves. I'm wondering if I can actually show that. It's got a, a and the, the point of the hearts come together where the three leaves come together. This plant is one of my favorites to show to kids because the flowers are edible, the little seed pods are edible, the leaves are edible, and uh, most kids like um, sweet and sour flavors and this is a sweet and sour wonder. You do have to be careful with it because it's like rhubarb. It has a lot of oxalic acid in it and um, oxalic acid will accumulate if you eat it too often and give you sore joints and other complications. However, um, these are these are incredibly tasty and uh, as an initial thing for showing kids on the way home how to get their snacks I highly recommend wood sorrel. So the next plant on our list is uh, wild lettuce and uh, this is also an invasive plant. I'm just gonna pull it up here out of the ground if it'll let me. Oh, didn't get much of the root. But it's just got a, a long root on it and then it generally goes relatively straight up, has a yellow flower that turns to white fluff with the seeds, and it's got these toothed leaves that wrap a little bit around the stem. Now, one of the things about wild lettuce is it's got, it's got a little bit of t uh, uh, jaggedy edge uh, along the, uh, the edge of the leaf, and it's got uh, some spines along the back, um, but when you break it, you'll see little teeny bits of latex. I'm not sure if you can get close enough to see there, but there's like a white milky substance that comes out along the edge of the leaf when you break it. Now, this leaf, um, you can make, you can make uh, salads, stir fries, all kinds of things. You generally want to cut it with other, uh, with other plants that are milder, like wild carrots or primrose or um, uh, some of the, the wild onion family or um, violets or lamb's quarter. There are lots of things you can blend it with in a salad so that the, the bitter taste of the lettuce isn't too overwhelming. But this is a, this is a wonderful food and, and very good for your skin.
So the next plant uh, I'm going to show you, chances are you bumped into all over the place. This is dandelion. And if you look at that, it's got quite an impressive root. The whole plant is edible. You can eat the leaves, you can make the leaves into tea, you can eat the roots in a stir fry, you can make the roots into a tea or roast them and make a coffee substitute, which was done a lot during the World Wars. Um, this is one of the plants that crosses between being a medicine and being a food. But it's such a gentle medicine that it's the kind of thing that it's a food you can eat almost every day without doing any harm to yourself. It's very, very good for, for the liver, which is the major detoxification organ in the body. And so it's a wonderful plant to get familiar with in this time. Now, like the wild lettuce, it has quite a bitter flavor, but the smaller the leaves are and the more tender, the better uh, a flavor, the sweeter a flavor you get out of them. It'll still be bitter, but it won't be as bitter as the large leaves. But you can throw these leaves into juices. When you dry them, a lot of the bitter disappears. And um, when you, again, when you cut it with other milder greens, you get a, a really delicious, uh, you get a really delicious salad. Um, so anything you, you would put cooked greens in or you would put um, raw greens in, you can mix dandelion in about ratio one to five and be getting the nutrients of the dandelion without the overwhelming flavor. So here we've got a large patch of violets. That's the next plant we're going to look at. Um, you can see that these ones are getting on in the season and some of them are losing a lot of their color. Um, these ones on the other hand are still really rich dark green color. Um, violets have a, a distinct heart-shaped leaf um, with a really deep lobing where the, the curves of the heart come together. And they've got fairly distinct um, veining patterns sort of sweeping around the leaf. And the bottom tends to be a much grayer or silverier color than the top. The top is quite usually quite dark. The violets, you can eat the, the leaves, you can eat the flowers when they first come out in the spring. And these are one of the first greens to come out. So from earliest spring to latest fall, you can be harvesting the, um, the violet leaves to make uh, a whole bunch of different foods with the, uh, with the green leaves. And in the spring with the flowers, the flowers are gorgeous. You can use the flowers for making um, wine, you can put them on top of cakes, you can put them on top of salads, anything that you want to look absolutely gorgeous before you eat. If you're going to make a salad, I suggest you use the, the smaller leaves that are you know less than an inch and a half in diameter because those leaves you'll actually be, uh, will actually be more tender. The, it's not that the larger ones aren't edible and you can put them through a juicer, it's that the larger they are, that the, it tends to be the more leathery they are. So next on our list of edible wild plants is wild carrot. And I've actually got beside me here a, uh, a second year wild carrot because it's got a two year life cycle. And in the second year, it makes these big flower heads that we call Queen Anne's Lace that are all white, frothy, flat surface of flowers with a little purple scent flower sometimes in the center. Um, and, then, and then it turns into this seed head. But what you actually want to look for are these leaves that happen during the first year of growth or in the spring of the second year of growth. Those leaves are your indicator that it's a carrot. Now, good thing to know about carrots is that they're in a family of plants that are, um, not all of them are edible and some of them are actually hazardous to your health or poisonous. Um, but if you look at this, there's actually a pretty decent sized root and you can get them up to about, you know, an inch around from a single season. The greens are edible in salads, soups, stews, stir fries, whatever you want. The roots are basically a carrot. 
Now, if, there, if it's in its second year and it's too late in the spring, that root will be getting a little bit, um, little bit tough. So you're looking for something that's, that's tender, that's easy to chop with a knife. And when you smell it, there's such a strong carrot flavor that comes off the root and off the, um, off the greens. What you, what you do want to be aware of is uh, if you're going to start looking at wild carrots, you need to pay attention to where they come from. What's the soil like? Is it wet? If it's wet soil, chances are it's not a wild carrot, it's actually water hemlock. There are other species of carrot that grow different, slightly different leaves, bigger, bigger, um, bigger segments on the leaves. And uh, when you're when you're looking at them, you want to make sure that you're not you're not harvesting hogweed or wild parsnip because those can uh, give you contact dermatitis and you can end up being uncomfortable for quite a long time. The next time. plant we're going to look at is mallow, and um, there are many different species of mallow, up to and including rose of um, rose of Sharon, which also has edible leaves and edible flowers. But um, if you look down here, this plant is a mallow plant. There aren't any flowers left on them at this time of year because it's a little late in the season. But there are uh, seed pods. And when you crack open those seed pods, you get... Now, let me see if I can actually get that to open in my palm. There we go. There's some little black seeds in there. They're quite high in essential fatty acids, like evening primrose oil, uh, evening primrose seeds have evening primrose oil. Um, but also these little little seed pods, when they're new, you can you can pickle them like capers, or the flower buds. You can also pick or, pickle like capers. But the flowers and the leaves of this entire family are edible and can go straight in salads um, anywhere that you would use another green and it's quite a mild green so it's one of the ones that's really good for putting against um, uh, the wild lettuce or the um, dandelion because it will help to smooth down the flavors of the bitter Okay. Ooh, the six plants that we covered, which were uh, wood sorrel and wild lettuce and dandelion and wild violet, wild carrot, and mallow, are all uh, European or Asian invasives, and uh, they love disturbed soil. They'll show up pretty well anywhere that people are worldwide, but um, here in Zone Five, Zone Six. Uh, right on the border. You'll find them pretty well everywhere you go and they're, they're pretty easy to start incorporating into your diet.